Let's get some, some further reaction. And, and football fans, maybe of a certain age, would have enjoyed watching Gianni Cavialli in his prime on Channel 4's Gazzetta Football Italia. And the host of, of that show back then, still very respected football journalist and broadcaster, James Richardson, joins us now. Um, James, uh, thank you so much uh, to you as well for, for sparing the time. Um, first of all, give us your reaction to, to this awful news today. Uh, it's tremendously sad. It not... In a sense, not unexpected because we knew that uh, the illness had really taken a, a turn for the worse. But he was such a lion. He was such a um, a vital man that the idea of him not being there is extraordinary. So, yeah, it's very sad. Very sad. And I wonder with you, James, if I can take a bit of a sort of a chronological look at, at his at his career and his life. And because he... he, he... He really burst onto the scene in those early years, the, the Italian youth set up and, and, and his time at Cremonese. Just how much of, of a, you know, an incredible prospect, a talent was he when, when he burst onto the scene? Well, he was a huge star with the under-21s, as you say, with Cremonese. And the, the move to Sampdoria, which, uh, because Juve famously turned him down, they thought it was too, too expensive. And uh, they subsequently rectified that, that era later. But he, he enjoyed those glorious years at at Sampdoria in between with his his great friend and a lifelong uh, brother almost, Roberto Mancini. And uh, when, certainly when, I mean, I went to Italy in 92, but before that, Viali was already pretty much the biggest star in, in the Italian game, which at the, at the time was the kind of the pinnacle of world football. He was the, the, the biggest character, one of the greatest strikers, and one of the most interesting people that, that you could meet within football at the time, and I think ever since. If you could expand on that for us, James. I mean, you know, your, your show, because that's Football Italia, was mm -hmm. such and remains uh, a, a cultural reference point for football, particularly in, in the 1990s. Um, I, I can see you with a little wry smile there, James. Do you have any, you know, particular, you know, personal recollections or anything that went into some of those shows which involved Gianluca Vialli and, you know, the, the, the value he gave to the game and the world in terms of his character? Yeah, I mean, I think what the really... You were speaking to Athol still before and you asked him what what was different about Gianluca. And I think perspective was something that he had in almost infinite quality, infinite quantities that he was, you know, it's very easy to kind of think about any situation strictly within uh, the the box that it presents itself in. But he always seemed to take a step outside of any discussion, even his illness. I think that the words and the thinking and the, the things he's wrote about his illness in the last few years were uh, some of the... I think really, really helpful to a lot of people. But back in the day, uh, when I was a, a, a young man attempting to interview uh, famous Italian football players, he was one of the nicest people that that I encountered. He was also one of the most interesting because any question you asked him, you would get a genuine conversation. He would consider your question, and he would come up with something in by way of a response that you would not have thought of, and that would enrich, I think, everyone's. Uh, understanding of the situation that he was living in uh, as a footballer in in Serie A and, uh, and as a person. He was also, I mean, a very playful guy. We've heard about how much he liked to laugh. Um, he was regularly up for doing uh, little skits or, I don't know, wearing a, wearing a wig so he could pretend he wasn't Gianluca Vialli so that he could get, get away with not doing an interview with me, that kind of thing. Uh, he was a a, a tremendous football. I mean, one of the most exciting talents that City had at those times. His bicycle kicks, his roveshati, the the, the other kicks, were, which were a, a trademark of his in, in the early nineties, were, were were one of the things that really made I think City out so special. And then, as I say, the person that he was beyond the football was something really remarkable. I mean, everybody will come out and say things when a, a great person dies about how wonderful they were, but he genuinely was the most interesting person that we that we spoke to, I think, throughout throughout those years. I mean, there were some great people there and some some real thinkers, but Joan Luca was always special. Of all the tributes that I've heard today, perhaps the one that's really struck me the most was Sam Dorius, James, where they mentioned mm. not just the overhead kicks and the goals, but your cashmere shirts, your earring, your platinum blonde hair, your ultras bomber jacket. Um, was that the era, do you think, where he was really truly expressing himself? Uh, it seems like he was an open book, was he? Well, I'm sure there were, there, there were lots of things going on beyond what people saw with him and Roberto Mancini, the the Gemelli del Gol, the, the Gold Twins. It, it was an incredible time. I mean, Sampdoria was a very special club, and there's no question that football in those days was a 
in the sense that it allowed footballers to live slightly more idiosyncratic lives. It was a more liberal place. In other ways, it wasn't a more liberal place, no question. But football uh, in those days allowed a star like Viali to maybe have a slightly more extrovert lifestyle. Uh, and Sampdoria in particular was run as a club where Mantovani, the, the, the Paolo Mantovani, the, the owner, really wanted his 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 stars, almost like his families, he, he felt they were, to to live the life they wanted to lead. And and, and Viale and Mancini were able, and the whole group of them, I mean, they were, they were, it was a famous group of, of players. They called themselves the Seven Dwarves. They were, they were teammates, they were brothers on and off the field. And that's why this provincial side, I mean, kind of like a Southampton, if you will, was able to actually win the Italian title against the likes of Milan and, and Juve and Inter and, and all the other huge Northern clubs. So um, it was a really special time and he was, he and Mancini together were the were the fulcrum of it, the figureheads of that. And his style, his the the, the blonde hair, the the shaven head, as you say, the earrings, just the whole kind of Gianluca style was 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 part of the whole charm of it, definitely. Yeah, and and just seeing shots of him again, and of course, you know, he, he wants to return, uh, and he even dreamt of leading the the Sampdoria project. Sadly. Uh, that that opportunity was was taken away from so cruelly. Um, but after Sampdoria, then came then came UVA, and of course the the, the Champions League and, and more huge success. Uh, overall, James, when you consider everything that he achieved in the 1980s, 1990s, you were so close to it over there in Italy and with Gliazzuri as well. W where does he sit in the pantheon of Italian greats? Uh, I, I don't know what what number you want to put on it, but he's. He's one of the greatest Italian players ever in terms of his character, in terms of his skill, in terms of his palmares, what he won, in terms of his ability to move from small, sorry, small club to big club to another country to then win trophies as a player manager with Chelsea to go on to become a manager full fledged to win the European Championships as part of Italy's setup. And I think a really key part of Italy's setup last last summer i think that there's nothing that you know to go on to be an author to be a such a human figure that there's nothing that he didn't do well and in within the realms of football and italian football certainly i i, I wouldn't put anyone above him james i've really enjoyed this conversation thank you for, for shining that light and, and and celebrating the life and career of, of, of gianluca vialli as well as as mourning his passing thank you so much for joining us thank you